Welcome back to Project Hospital. Welcome back to Infectious Diseases DLC. Although we have largely now covered everything to do with uh, the DLC, except of course there is um, the uh, emergency event that we haven't experienced yet. So looking forward to that. Um, but otherwise in this series, we've been concentrating on completing the last insurance that I haven't quite completed yet, which is Overcure. Um, where we stand with that at the moment is that I need to have no untreated patients uh, for the uh, for 10 days consecutively. Or it might not need to be consecutively, but uh, certainly for 10 days. Um, and I'm just going to go for consecutively. Um, but... Uh, that leaves sort of not a lot to do. That's a that's a slow old burner, uh, that one. So I thought what we might do is do some uh, department deep dives each episode for a little while. Um, I've done deep dives before in Project Hospital, my first series where we looked at staff perks and, you know, sort of comfort levels and surgeries and all, and all this sort of stuff we did lots of uh, deep dives but i've never sort of covered entire departments and what you can expect from them and that sort of stuff and i thought that that might be quite nice for us to do and today i thought we would start with orthopedy i'm not going to start with emergency uh emergency's got quite a lot of facets to it and can be a bit um confusing complicated so we might do emergency with trauma towards the end um but orthopedy I would say is one of those um, departments that you would start with once you've got your clinic going when you are ready to expand into a new department orthopedy tends to be a good bet orthopedy or orthopedics is a branch of medicine dealing with the correction of deformities of bones or muscles um, and in this game we do get a lot of fractures and sprains joint injuries that sort of stuff it's a fairly easy department and it's definitely a nice starting department uh, for the game um, but there are some uh, problems that come in through um, orthopedy or orthopedics um, that um, can cause uh, crashing and result in possible death in extreme cases uh, but it's not that bad um, they're quite easy to deal with and we'll, we'll get into um, uh, why and that tends to be a lot of the open or complicated fractures or the deep wounds um, you know so we'll look we'll look into those in my hospital um, the orthopedic department is denoted by the yellow colour, as we can see here, and uh, this is where the doctor's clinics um, are here. I've got two, only two, um, and we can see that uh, I have a reception uh, for orthopedy here as uh, well. Um, this hospital is available for download in the Steam Workshop if you would uh, like to grab this hospital. Um, there is a link in the description below uh, for that. Uh, if you do decide to uh, download it and you like it, please do give it um, uh, like a, a thumbs up, a favourite in, in the... Um in Steam uh, Workshop. I would really appreciate that. Uh, what we have done today is taken over. We've come into uh, Orthopedia and we've hit automatically take over all the patients at this department because I don't want to miss a thing. So uh, we have got that going on today and we can see here um, that Michael Wright has, uh, has come in uh, through at the clinic so these are my orthopedic clinics and we do get a lot of uh, walk-ins you can see here he's actually already been diagnosed um by thumb pain carpal tunnel syndrome um so like uh, many uh of uh, the illnesses in fact i think there's something like 51 illnesses um on the orthopedy uh, department only 11 of which have a, a high risk of crashing possible death um so not not too bad at all but well, we can see here that uh, Michael Wright has carpal tunnel uh, syndrome, um, which is uh, one of the easier things to deal with. And we can see here um, a bunch of possible um, symptoms uh, that uh, he could have. Um, and we can see we've got some hidden symptoms. We're going to do a physical. A lot of these uh, can be found by physical, so we're going to get that um, underway. Who is this that's working? This is Fairwick. Oh, one of my uh, one of my uh, patrons uh, is working here um, uh, today, which is 
absolutely fantastic. Uh, so this is actually going to result in surgery. So let's have a look at other aspects um, of orthopedia as an entire department before we get too into the, uh, the illnesses that can come in. Cox about to do that but then Michael Wright uh, finished his uh, physical exam and look at all these symptoms it uh, helped us uh, locate that is unbelievable um, we can see here um, that he is going to need an endoscopic surgery uh, in order to uh, deal with this um, and for surgeries they absolutely do need to be hospitalized uh, there's no pulsating symptoms here so we're just going to go for regular hospitalization and uh, arrange to get his surgeries uh, we can see here that uh, he has got some discomfort for all the various pains that he has and we've got options here for two different pain meds and we've got a star and a half to go in terms of comfort so we're actually going to give him both of these and you know we'll even do the recommended um so that will uh, completely take care of him so yes other areas uh, this is the clinic here so we've seen the reception in the clinic for orthopedy but what else do we have in orthopedy in terms of day clinic, we do just have uh, the office that we've been looking at with the reception. That's pretty much it. As always, tends to be the standard. And uh, I find that because we don't get anything too complicated here at Orthopedia, having the certainty level at medium is sufficient um, uh, to make sure that everybody gets treated uh, quite well. And given that we now have all the departments on this hospital um, and you can actually only have three insurance at any one time, um, you'll note that there's not a lot of pe people um, on the ward here at the moment, although I have just released three because it is 8 a.m. and that's when the, uh, the ward patients tend to go home. So we are heading away from the clinic stuff and looking at hospitalization. Um, and this this is, the, the, I have the same setup for, for all my wards actually. You can see here again, it's all denoted by the color yellow for me for orthopedy. Um, and we've got my regular ward here and my uh, high dependency unit. You'll see this be repeated throughout the departments. We have a, a little bit of visitation here on each ward, but they also have visitation over here um as well uh additional because uh this doesn't always this isn't always enough you can see we've also got some toilets uh, for them and what's also nice um about this area is there's food and drink and some entertainment for anyone that's on the ward um, because they do uh, like to deal with their needs uh at the entrance of the wards you can see here that i've got some stretchers and i actually also have um i keep some nurses right on the wall and you can see it is marked as an actual uh, nurse's office and this is where I keep the care nurses uh, so care nurses we do uh, have gone over them in detail in uh, another episode on the first series um, but uh, the care nurses essentially do just look after those that are on the ward. Um, I keep my transfer nurses elsewhere. You can see here across the corridor are the uh, diagnostic uh, rooms um, and, uh, and then I have a lot of office stuff. This is where I keep all my uh, transfer nurses as you can see. We could probably actually reduce those as quite a lot. Um, my uh, diagnostic doctors as well and uh, this here you can see I've just got the doctor's office comes uh, around here, but it just makes it look like that we've got a head of the department here. In fact, I believe he is. Um, oh, uh, Blaubeer Kushin, who is uh, a patron of mine, I think is actually registered as the chief doctor of the department. Chief doctors are quite important, uh, particularly to have ones that are well leveled and skilled um, because uh, doctors that aren't very well trained um, do indeed uh, rely on these doctors. They actually call them on the mobile phone um, and uh, and seek help and advice. So having good ones of these is quite good. Not only um, that, but you'll notice that uh, also in satisfaction, it lists good boss plus plus, you know, which is uh, very important. I mean, good boss can be, uh, tends to come, I think, if they have this trait here, the good boss trait. Um, you know so you know there's a there's, there's an extra perk there as well uh yeah and then the other area uh to note about orthopedy of course is surgery which i keep up here um and i have uh one daytime surgical team so two surgical doctors and an anaesthetist uh, and I have the same again at, uh, in the evening just one team at day and night and that seems to be absolutely plenty uh, same here I've got surgery nurses over here 
as as well. Um, and then I've got uh, now it, it, with surgeries. Surgeries are actually shared rooms. Um, so you'll note over here, shared rooms. So you don't actually have to um, have all, all these surgery rooms. So I probably could uh, whittle these down. Um, this just denotes that it is the orthopedic janitors that will clean these rooms rather than who can use these rooms to do surgeries in. They, they can go to any of these surgery rooms and use them. Um, so uh, making surgery rooms probably... Uh, not a particular colour, but allow all departments to use is absolutely fine. Uh, you could have a lot less surgery rooms that way, which uh, is a nice money saver. Yes. The only other room um, is there is a sonography unit as well for um, orthopedy, uh, which uh, I have here. I have a, a, a whole area uh, of the hospital dedicated to the cardiography and sonographies, as well as that neurological room. Um, I keep them all uh, together, so they're all in here. Um, and you can see here that um, there is no cardiography room uh, for orthopedies, just a sonography room. So she is in there for when uh, needed. Uh, the only other thing uh, possibly that's uh, unique or somewhat unique um, to this department is the EMG machine, uh, which you have to get into the clinic uh, there. It's probably also actually is it in the diagnostic rooms? Yes, yes it is, yeah, yeah. Um, which uh, measures electrical impulses in the muscles, I believe, something like that. So, okay, uh, let's get into um, some of the illnesses coming in. Let's see if I can actually find um, some of the more difficult ones as well, just so that we can get an idea of what's coming in. Uh, what I would say is there's not masses of variety um, to uh, the illnesses. Um, the pharmacy is too small. That seems unlikely. We've got two pharmacies. We have a sm we do have a small pharmacy here, as you can see, which is currently empty. But there's probably quite a lot of people making their way to it. I've made like a row of shops here, um, and this this pharmacy is is supposed to look like a row of shops. But we also have a pharmacy dedicated. It's like um where is it? It's over here somewhere. Yeah, it's like a hospital pharmacy. Look at this one. This is a huge pharmacy. So there's two pharmacies. That's nonsense. I'm not I'm not accepting that. <laughs> So that's that's absolutely nonsense. Um, yeah, so there's not a lot of variety, even though there is 51 illnesses. Uh, many of them are things like um, simple fracture to the, and then there's ones for all different parts of the body, you know. And it's similar with the um, the, the difficult illnesses, uh, or somewhat difficult illnesses, the illnesses that can cause crashing. Um, you've got complicated fracture of the, and then it could be the femur or the humerus or the ulna. Um, deep wound on arm is uh, another one that can cause uh, 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 crashing. It can be the arm. It says deep wound on feet, but I think it, it means foot, deep wound on foot, um, hand or leg. And then open fractures as well are, are pretty uh, dangerous. Um, open fractures of the femur, humerus, ulna, or the tibia uh, can come up. So there's 11 uh, in total of high risk of, of crashing, which can, if you ignore them, lead to possible death. But you'd, you'd have to work at it, I would say. <laughs> So we can see here, Nancy has come into orthopedy reception, um, which is fantastic. We can see that she's either got a fracture or a sprain on her ankle. She's not entirely sure which. Nice and easy uh, to deal with. Um, so this is the emergency waiting room here. So she is, of course, going to uh, come into here. Um, this here, uh, this is meaning um, the first floor uh, and orthopedy in terms of the department is indeed here on the first uh, first floor um, in uh, the UK and I think a lot of uh, uh, European countries this is considered the ground floor uh, and then this this is the first floor here um, so I've tried uh, really hard with my my signage uh, you've got the uh, the second floor here and then uh, the ground floor is all this stuff on the glass I've tried my best I've tried my best with it so where is Nancy she is currently um, queuing uh, and in she comes to see Fairwick um, I always like to have the diagnosis uh, list up I think this is always uh, a nice thing um, ultimately this should be quite easy because uh, it's out of two and what's nice uh, something that uh, I think is always worth doing 
with your clinic doctors is to go for the advanced diagnosis so that you can do a dif differential um, and so that's that's what we have here so with Nancy uh, I always think it's worth doing a physical and to be honest physical might might help us find this um, even if there's no real value to doing a physical I always do the physical you know it's just worth doing it's just it's just good medicine <laughs> um, but if we can't get it in the physical and he might be able to get it in the physical I don't know but if we can't then I think we should do uh, the differential oh look here we go. She's uh, all done. He couldn't find it with a physical. So, yeah, now we're going to arrange the uh, differential um, and see if that helps. If it doesn't, ultimately, she, uh, we'll probably have to send her for an x-ray of the lower limb. And that's uh, something worth noting. If you are building a new hospital and you are looking to expand into your first apartment, while I do recommend... Um, orthopedia being one of your first um, general surgery is also a good one because it's quite a good money maker but I I think in terms of ease uh, if you're new to the game probably orthopedia um, and that is if you're building orthopedia be prepared to need at least one x-ray machine I would budget that into your costs at least one x-ray machine there is arguments to need uh, an MRI and a CT but really um, the 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 additional hidden cost, if you like, of all the PD is an X-ray uh, room for sure. So he's done the differential and it was enough. So we got away with not having to send her uh, for an X-ray. So we've got an ankle sprain here. Um, so we have managed to diagnose that. We do still have um, hidden symptoms and it's possible because we've done the physical. So it's possible that it is just um, we could do an MRI um, to confirm uh, that it is a sprain um, I guess it's going to be an MRI because it's going to be um, it, it's not a bone problem uh, it's more of a muscle thing right uh, so the x-ray wouldn't really help in this circumstance but it would have if if, uh, if you didn't have a doctor that could do differentials um, or the differential wasn't able to tell the difference um, sending them for an x-ray um, if it came back positive, you know it's broken. If it came back negative, you know it's a sprain, and that would avoid the need for an MRI. So there's always there always tends to be a way around it, particularly with a department like orthopedia, which is I think is designed uh, for for early for early gameplay. Um, so uh, she just needs some painkillers. Look at that. She just needs some painkillers. Uh, so we're going to issue her the, issue the those to her. She's also um, getting some discomfort from spasms. Um, and so we can give her some meds. If you don't know what to uh, to prescribe, you can just uh, hover over the current symptoms and it'll tell you what you need to prescribe there so we can get that done as well uh, because we don't really want to release her until her comfort is maxed out. There we are. So her comfort is up and we can now uh, send her home uh, and uh, if there's any meds for her to get, I've been dealing with somebody who had an abscess after surgery. Charming, I know. Um, she will uh, go to the pharmacy if uh, if she needs to go. Um, he's just giving her her prescription. So there we are. That, that's, I mean, that's pretty much the majority of the type of patients you'll get into orthopedia. Uh, very easy to deal with. And if they do have a surgery, uh, they need to be hospitalized and, and go for surgery. None of the surgeries are complicated. Uh, you can make them complicated if you have a very bad surgical staff or they're very tired. They may make some mistakes, as we can see with James Garcia. He's got an abscess with it, which is a, a complication around surgery. Do you know what might be nice is to actually also look at, before we get into trying to find the uh, some of the more complicated things, um, is... Uh, uh, seeing some of this machinery in uh, use uh, now it's fairly unnecessary for this guy we know he's got uh, uh, knee bursitis um, EMS is actually uh, a treatment that is unique to this department I believe um, so do you know what we'll we'll make him undergo an unnecessary test <laughs> while we're here I think we should get him to use this uh, EMS uh, machine sorry EMG machine Here's the test here, EMG, an electromography 
uh, is the recording and evaluation of the electrical activity of the patient's muscles. Yes. So we're actually going to uh, have him undergo one of these just so that we can check that out. And you can see how it's set up here um, that we've got a stool for um, the patient and a stool for the member of staff. Quite complicated to set these up. They can be a bit finicky. Uh, you don't want to see any orange when you're setting all this up because that suggests that it's not accessible. You need to make sure it's, it's placing nicely. But there we go. There was the test exciting hey <laughs> he's completed his test um and the other thing is this treatment the ems treatment i believe is fairly unique to this department as well electrical muscle stimulation is procedure used to uh used in various injuries or diseases that affect the the musculoskeletal system but it does cause uh extremely high discomfort so you want to be very sure that this is something you want to do um but there we are uh we uh, probably will do a physical just because i think it's always a good idea to do a physical but we're also going to diagnose him um and here for this he needs a uh, corticosteroid injections uh so uh here it says required rooms icu office diagnostic unit unit orthopedic so he is actually going to need to be hospitalized uh, so we're going to put him into regular hospitalization and arrange uh, those injections for him uh, to help increase his comfort because uh, actually these injections have a low uh, discomfort on them so they're not going to help his his uh, comfort levels at all um, so to help increase that we are going to give him some pain medica uh, medication because he is in pain and if we click over here he's also unhappy about the fever the fever is also causing him discomfort so we're going to give him something to bring his fever down as well um and that will uh, largely be him but uh, do you know what we might try and keep an eye on him uh because e this ems here is for the stiffness of the knee uh so it might arrange that for him even though it causes discomfort uh, just so that we can uh, check it out see what's going on so we might keep an eye on uh, richard richard is now being taken into a diagnostic unit who is this transfer nurse uh georgia bain Who's this? Uh, and uh, Jill Diamond. Gill. It's probably Gill, isn't it? Gill Diamond uh, is here uh, to treat him. I've named, uh, renamed all the staff <laughs> in my hospital. Uh, good. He's there. Uh, can't get a good angle. But what can we see here? So he's been getting his injections. He got his injections. That was it. And uh, and now. And now he's being transported back to the room. What about these other things? These, I believe, they can actually administer from this office. They just do a bit of typing at the computer and they get these medicines. But this one, he'll need to come back to this room for this treatment. Um, and I doubt anything will happen. They'll probably just stand by his bedside. It'll be interesting. Be interesting to find out. Who's the nurse transferring him back? Karen Dork. That's who. <laughs> Look, Michael is uh, just uh, down the way here on the same uh, ward. Uh, it looks like he's had lots of painkillers and that for all the stuff that he's been going through. And he's also had his surgery. Uh, so he is uh, he is all good now. Isn't that fantastic? I think it's pretty fantastic. Uh, now, Richard did indeed receive his pain meds and whatnot. Um, he is now going to be transported to treatment, which means that he is um, going to be getting his EMS treatment. Here he comes. Indeed, just into the diagnostic unit uh, for his EMS treatment. Oh, look, look. So the doctor comes over to here. Interesting, while he's lying down. Okay. So he's using the the, uh, the EMG machine. Uh, oh, now he's telling him to take his top off. Interesting. Oh, he's, he's taken all of his clothes off. What is he doing? Definitely seems to be hurting him. Oh. Okay. I like that they did use this EMG machine a little bit more. <laughs> it has got some other uses. It's kind of nice. A lot of typing. A lot of typing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's coming to an end now. That's quite a lengthy procedure, actually, um, that one. That does take quite a bit of time. Um, and in... The terms of the game, not really necessary. It dealt with the stiffness of this uh, knee. Um, and I would say if you're short on staff or you don't want these rooms to be taken up for any real length of time, it's probably in 
entirely unnecessary to be honest um, not needed and it actually causes a bit of discomfort doing it as well uh, rather but then again uh, and this symptom didn't actually cause him any discomfort so you, you know yeah um, not entirely necessary that process I would uh, say so with that done I think we should now definitely look at uh, the more difficult uh, cases that can come in through orthopedy I think what I'm going to do is start an event um, a crash or a natural disaster is probably um, uh, going to be quite good for bringing in uh, some of uh, uh, these problems that you can get we're looking for anything that's a deep wound an open fracture or is a complicated fracture they're the items that we're looking for and I think that we might get some if we uh, start an event which is a risky thing to do when I don't want any untreated patients <laughs> so let's trigger I think we will trigger a crash um, there has been a road traffic accident on a major road in the region. Fantastic. Uh, so we've got... Well, it's not fantastic <laughs> at all. So we've got three patients coming in. No idea what they're coming in with. Let's hope um, that one or all of them are coming in with the sorts of things that we are looking for so dana here has actually come in with a deep wound we're not sure whether it's the leg or the or on feet both of them <laughs> um but she doesn't actually have any of the uh, serious symptoms that could cause could, could cause crashing um and that's that's something worth noting that with these uh, uh symptoms there's not always a chance um, that we'll get something as terrible as hemorrhaging, uh, for example, which is, as you can see here, if there is a deep wound, um, the chances are as they might come in, I think it's quite a high chance as well, something like an 80% chance that they might come in with uh, hemorrhaging if it's a deep wound. Uh, but also with deep wounds, it looks like there's a good chance as well, maybe that it's all going to be fine. And that's what we found here with Dana. Nothing, nothing to worry about. Oh, 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 what do we have here? Patricia Johnson is a, a lovely example of complicated fractures. Um, so complicated fractures, um, there are, I think, three. There are three possible complicated fractures that a patient can come in with. We can see here that Patricia has two. And these three complicated fractures are all essentially exactly the same you can see here on the symptoms list that these are the same uh same these are the same <laughs> these are the same um we've got the hum humerus um the ulna and then you can also have uh, the femur uh, and this would if it was listed here it would uh, be exactly the same and this is lovely because we can see here that with patricia we have uh three um uh, flashing symptoms and it just so happens that these are um, the only three symptoms that they can come in with on orthopedy that could cause potential crashing um, so that's kind of nice um, so what we're going to do we're going to take control this is like a perfect example case uh, so we're going to go in here with Patricia we can see she's bleeding all over the goddamn floor um, uh, we'll deal with Paul Young and be back. Okay, we are done with Paul Young. Right, okay. Um, so here she is. So the first thing they're going to do is stabilize her. And then, because uh, we've taken control, it's going to be our job uh, to go through this. And that's exactly what we'll do. Um, and we'll cover what's going on with these. Right, there we go. So she has been stabilized. What do you want us to do? Well, before we do any examinations, we should really be dealing uh, with these. Now, out of these... I should know all of these serious symptoms if not dealt with can lead to um hypervolemic shock which again if not treated could result in death uh, so we want to deal with these now out of these three the most urgent is unstoppable bleeding so when unstoppable bleeding comes in um you have one to two hours uh in game hours uh to treat this before um, it will go into shock, before she'll go into shock. Um, and so a pressure bandage is absolutely the first thing that we want to be doing here. So out of these terrible things, this is by far the most dangerous, unstoppable bleeding. So that's what we're going to do first. Uh, there we go. So there is, uh, they're doing it now. Look, she grabbed her badge. 
Uh, it looks like she has the trait of aggressive, which means she interrupts procedures, which means procedures are going to take a little bit longer. Um, also, if staff are under-trained or, um, you know, or quite new, they'll work quite slowly. They can make a lot of mistakes. These are all sorts of things worth noting. Um, uh, my staff is all very well-trained uh, for the most part, so uh, we shouldn't get a lot of those complications. Uh, we'll probably talk about complications. Um, uh, when we get into sort of uh, cardio, uh, cardiology and neurology, um, particularly when it comes to surgical complications, um, we may even cover surgical complications in the next episode because we'll go, uh, we'll deep dive into general surgery. So that might be a nice place to do some of them. But you only get certain complications on certain departments, right? Um, and some of the complications can be more difficult to discover than others um but none of that we don't get any of that here um you do have surgeries obviously on orthopedy so you might get the odd complication but uh i think it's just an infection really uh a physical um might uh, show an infection of the wound that you can just clean and jobs are good and in fact i think there are some illnesses i think we found actually is it jennifer young no it's not jennifer young we had uh, the, with the deep wound. That's it. It is possible here, infected wound. So you can find this um, as a symptom on deep wounds in general that just come into the hospital. Well, this is something that can be also a complication of surgery. And I think it might be the only complication for surgery in orthopedy, um, which is found with a physical. I, I don't quote me on that, um, but it's all very easy anyway it's all very easy so there we are unstoppable bleeding dealt with um we're pleased we're pleased with that so the next most urgent thing is multiple arteries damage okay damage to multi multiple smaller arteries due to a large wound this can cause uh, her to go into shock anywhere between two to four hours so this is our next biggest issue uh, that we have going on here and this is emergency care you need to be careful with emergency care because sometimes um, the game will automatically uh, do um, emergency care or it will recommend that you do emergency care um, and I don't necessarily believe it's always the best option but we absolutely have to do it here because she will go into shock and possibly die if we don't um so we need to absolutely deal with it emergency care causes an awful lot of discomfort but unfortunately her life is at risk so the next thing we want to do is the emergency uh, care so let's uh, let's get on that who have we got here we've got warped empress one of my uh, uh patrons along with molly rainbow who's uh, just just a nurse uh that i have here um oh look we've also had uh a harmless fracture coming we won't worry about that we won't worry about that uh we are very much interested here we go so emergency care which leaves us with hemorrhaging now hemorrhaging again can cause her to go into shock uh, hypervolemic shock um but hemorrhaging it wouldn't cause that for anywhere between four to eight hours so you've got quite a lot of time with this one um, if anything, this is more of a nuisance for making the floor a mess. You'll you'll note there is actually blood on the floor here. So um, this is why I keep a janitor very close on on hand uh, to look after very much this area because we do get a lot of blood around here. Um, you still want to deal with it though quite quickly. You might as well. We're right here, um, and all this is is. Um, some drugs drugs are used to stop the bleeding so we just give her some anti-hemorrhagics and uh, and that's it so these are all all these things that uh can happen all three of the serious symptoms that can happen with any of the orthopedy uh sort of serious illnesses um are very easy to deal with we're just right here in trauma there's nothing crazy about it um and one to two hours it's quite low for some of the serious illnesses that we can get in this game, but for something that you can do right here on the trauma department, it seems like masses of time. Absolutely masses of time. Um, so here we are. Um, with that done, uh, she is now no longer at risk of collapsing. So ultimately what we need to do is find out exactly what's wrong with her. We're going to do a physical first of all now i can't do a differential on trauma all my trauma doctors and my icu doctors do not have advanced diagnosis they are anesthetists instead 
for the simple reason that if a patient collapses, uh, this particular doctor is specialized in stabilizing that patient and, it, and if they're very good at this, it can help decrease um, the probability of the patient collapsing again and therefore helps decrease the possibilities of death. It gives you longer to deal with the, with the symptoms that are causing your patients to crash. So to me, in trauma and in ICU and in anaesthetist is much more important um, than uh, advanced diagnosis. But it can be a little bit annoying sometimes because what we have here, uh, a differential would probably help us with this. And of course, uh, you know, I can't, I can't do one. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring up her comfort a little bit. We can see here that she's uh, unhappy with her arm injury. She's got severe arm pain. She also has an exposed bone. So we're going to give her some pain medicine and we're going to cover up her exposed bone with a bandage. So we're going to just bring her comfort up because we are going to have to send her away um, for an x-ray, I would say now, because, uh, yeah, we need to x-ray this upper limb so we can uh, work out whether it's the ulna or the humerus um, uh, that we are dealing with. Uh, so I'm not going to order it just yet. I'm going to have them uh, sort this out. See how our comfort just shoots right up. I think it, this is important. We've got all the time in the world now as well. Um, so we're going to do that. Um, and then what we could do, we don't actually need to keep her here. We could send her to orthopedy now. But um, I, I'm just going to send her for uh, the x-ray from here, I think. Actually, given that we're supposed to be on orthopedy, shall we go to orthopedy? And she is no longer an emergency. So let's arrange to send her to the orthopedy department. And then as soon as she's arrived there, we're going to send her for an x-ray of uh, the upper limb. That's what we're going out to do so we can work out which uh, one it is. But there we are. I mean, that is one of the, uh, probably, that is the most complicated an illness will get on orthopedia. It's extremely easy to do. We just dealt with it all right here. It's super easy. And they will um, largely do all of that um, in the right order, I think, as well, automatically. Um, so it's like really, really great. But we'll stick with Patricia until she is all better. Oh my goodness, look at all this blood. This is coming from, look, Jessica Green. So somehow Jessica Green has gotten to this department without me really knowing it. Is she still actively bleeding? What on earth is happening here? Right. I think we need to get another physical. So we can see here, they've stopped some hemorrhaging. But we do have a flashing symptom. She is pouring blood absolutely everywhere. That's not good at all. I think I might put her on code blue as well. Treat her as a critical patient. What on earth? Howard Dredd, he butchered her. <laughs> uh, he is now doing John Martin's um, leg cast, who's actually part of this. We're waiting for old uh, Patricia here, aren't we? Yeah, she's in the process of being transported to X-ray. Okay, she is on her way to X-ray. Uh, where we have a new concern. Okay, so he's doing the physical. She must have come in through the walk-in. We don't really have a patient history, I don't think, about sort of where they've been, departments they've been to, doctors they've seen. We don't really have a patient history, so I don't know how she's come into the hospital and how this would have been missed. It's not, it's not something I'm able to find out. So she had a physical. Ah, a surgical cut and is bleeding. So there we go. Okay, we've actually found, that's nice, um, a complication that can happen with um, surgeries on orthopedia. Look at that. Um, so it's a surgical cut and um, it's been causing bleeding and that's, so it's very clear, wasn't it? <laughs> the very clear problem. Um, so to deal with that, uh, we give her the anti-hemorrhagics. Patricia has arrived for her x-ray. She's like, no, I will not do what you tell me. Just take your shirt off. <laughs> okay, thanks. We are going to x-ray the upper limb. We need to find out whether it's a complicated fracture of the humerus or the ulna, Patricia. We can't fix it until we know which one it is, and it's going to be a fracture surgery on the arm. But we need to know specifically what we're going in for, my dear.
there we go. It's a complicated fracture of the ulna. There we go. Okay. So we can now arrange for surgery. And we can now, fairly new feature, fairly new, not, not massively new now, but we can now look at the, uh, the queue for surgery. And we can see actually that Patricia is the only one um, lined up to do surgery, to go to surgery. Now, I keep surgeries uh, uh, at the top of the building so that walk-ins don't come anywhere near surgery. Uh, there's no need for them uh, to. But we know that our orthopedic surgical team have just caused a surgical bleeding, a uh, surgical cut. Uh, so what's going on with this team? So let's have a look at this team. Um, we have... Um, it's daytime at the moment. So... I mean, he's looking pretty tired, isn't he? He's looking pretty tired. Might be worth me uh, looking at. Look, same. So we've got Milo Carpet, Shirley, who's a patron, and then the anaesthetist, uh, Judy Bigley. Um, so they're all looking pretty tired, actually. So it could be that I might need a second uh, surgical team um, because it's not a training issue. They're all very well trained, but they are looking tired. So that's worth noting, isn't it? Because I don't really think that I ever get that much happening. Um, this is aren't as bad, but look, Fredwood Beast hasn't been to the toilet in a while. And uh, Millie Boo Fidget <laughs> uh, could uh, probably do with something to eat and whatnot. So interesting. Am I in need of uh, a second surgical team? I might spend some time on my orthopedic department to see how busy it is and, uh, uh, and check that out. Um, interesting i wonder if patricia will be going into surgery before the staff changeover probably right patricia's now being transported uh, to treatment um so she is on her way i don't see the doctors moving which ones are they against these ones here i do not see them moving uh, how are they feeling now actually let's pull her her team up we've got these uh okay yeah Let's let's have a look at them. Um, so really hungry, but has been to the toilet. They have recuperated a little bit, which is which is good to know. And they're all getting ready for the fracture arm surgery. So we can see the nurses uh, are coming in. Oh, that nurse looks really tired. We can see that Fredwood Beast is in. Where's Millie Boo? Millie Boo, here she comes. Here comes Millie Boo. So the two nurses do tend to uh, arrive first, they prep everything, um, and they wait for the uh, patient to arrive. Here she comes, Patricia. Thank you very much, Karen Dork. So she's arrived, and this is when we should see the uh, the surgery, surgical team turn up. Here they are, which is why we need three sinks in these uh, in these areas. Are they going to cause any problems? Who knows, eh? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. So they're getting all uh, geared up. Nice. Everyone gets into position. Exciting. And the surgery shall commence. There we go, surgery over. They gave her the thumbs up. Now, if there are any complications from surgery, it won't appear just uh, yet. There will be a very clear moment uh, when it crops up. So the doctors are now leaving. Um, the nurses will probably also get cleaned up. Oh, look, here comes the janitor to clear up all the blood. Um, and one nurse tends to stay with them while they're waiting to be transported back to the room. And it's when we get to that part that generally if there's been a complication that's when we would see it so that we can see the uh, nurses now getting out of their equipment and then one nurse will come back and wait with her looks like it's Mr Beast and look all of a sudden, we have a new hidden symptom. Wow, what is going on? 
<laughs> with my orthopedy surgical team. So chances are this is going to be another one of these surgical cut bleedings. Um, but let's find out, shall we? Uh, for the ma for the majority, not always, but certainly I think in the case of uh, orthopedy, you'll be able to find any post-surgical problems with a physical. Um, and I think that's true of most of them, but certainly not all of them. But we'll, we'll discover those as we go through our um, department deep dives as the uh, season progresses. Here we go. Lovely. So we're now going to get back to her room. Uh, eight o'clock in the evening has now arrived. So uh, there is a massive staff changeover occurring. So she's going to have to wait for the nighttime staff to come in before she gets her physical. But we can see that this symptom is pulsating. You know, so again, this will cause a crash if it's not dealt with. Wow, look at that. So as soon as she got back, she went straight into hypervolemic shock. Um, so we really didn't get long here at all. She has now started to collapse. She is crashing. Uh, didn't get a chance <laughs> with that one. Um, so she will need a blood transfusion. Um, but that's not something they're going to do on this department. They are now going to send her to the ICU. I have no control over that. Wow, Patricia's turning into quite the case. Uh, it's interesting because, of course, she was part of an event which has now triggered to say that I did it successfully. Um, but Patricia's looking uh, peaky. And what's worrying for Patricia is because we're currently having the huge staff changeover, there's no staff. Oh, 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 look, somebody is running. What department are they from? Yeah, see, look. Gwyneth Keish has come from the Department of Infectious Diseases because it is, when they're crashing, literally anybody that is available from anywhere will come. Um, so she is now being transferred to the ICU. Interesting. We've ordered the physical. I'm also going to order the blood transfusion um, because uh, when it comes to the hypovolemic shock, you have two to four hours to deal with it. Um, so it's come at a really bad time because there's sort of no staff around, you know. It's, it's really, really bad. However, my ICU transfer nurses... Um, oh, no, look. It's not. Oh my god, it's the orthopedi. My ICU transfer nurses are rockets. Mind you, she's moving really quite quickly, isn't she? God, they really do shift it during surgery. Yeah, so this surgery team has, uh, has let old Patricia down. There is no doubt. Now, as mentioned earlier, uh, my ICU staff are um, trained as anaesthetists for occasions such as this where they are crashing but I am aware that there is one um, on the ICU that actually has quite a low anaesthetist skills I'm a little bit worried about who's going to turn up okay it's Thomas uh, who's a patron of mine well you know what I'm happy with that they are good they are good um, just so you can see what the department looks like so here we go uh, Thomas has stabilised her. She's now gone to sleep, which is all well and good. <laughs> um, but we really need to deal with this. And he is now leaving. Interesting. Yeah, so it's possible, though, that they do the blood transfusion from their computer. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll stick. We'll stick with Patricia. He's gone back to his computer. But we need a physical. Who's doing the physical? Yes, yeah, so look, it looks like that Thomas did that from his computer. Um, so we've now got the blood transfusion, but we've still got the, the cause here. You know, the symptom that caused this sh her, her to go into shock. We need somebody, here we go, who's this? Osman Lost has come along to do the physical, I presume, yes. Here we go, finally. <gasps> this one is an abscess. Okay, so she got an abscess. Build up of pus. Lovely, 
within the tissue surrounding a surgical wound. So it is kind of like a surgical cut. Maybe if we discovered it sooner, it would have been a surgical cut. Uh, surgical cut. Do they get worse over time? Infected, then abscess. You know, does it? <laughs> Does it progress? I don't know, but she has an abscess. So we need an incision and drainage. Charming. So I'm sure he'll just do that right here and now. Yes, there we go. So he has now dealt with that as he comes along. Lovely. So she will spend a day on the ICU and then I think she'll go and spend a day on orthopedy before she's actually released now because she did crash so that's they tend to uh, spend an extra an extra day in uh, hospitalization when uh, when they've been having problems um such as crashing when they're on the icu uh, so there we are patricia johnson will be absolutely fine um after her disgusting abscess if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe thank you to all my patreons for their continued support